Hi everyone. So in the previous few videos, we talked about the concepts of process creation. We saw how fork system call can be used to like create multiple processes which run concurrently. Now, if we have uh, processes running concurrently, then uh, they can actually be two types. So one can actually be an independent process, and the other one can actually be a cooperating process. So what is independent process what is cooperating process now independent processes are those which will actually you know like impact or affect the other processes or uh, they do not affect basically so these are independent so these do not affect any other processes or get affected by any other processes do not affect other processes or get uh, affected by any other processes in the system whereas cooperating processes are basically some process which actually you know can get affected by some other processes or they can affect some other processes so independent processes they won't uh, share data or information among other processes but cooperating processes will share the data and information among other cooperating processes so the basic difference uh, between like if if there are some concurrently running processes uh, we will actually have two types and uh, independent and cooperating independent will actually affect I mean, not affect other process. Cooperating will affect or get affected by other processes. So, this cooperating process, like wh why, why do we even need uh, to have process cooperation? Like, why would this be required? So, there might be multiple reasons why process cooperation is like necessary. So, maybe one case is like uh, information sharing. So like, let's say if there are like multiple users who want to access the same resource, same piece of information they want to access. So in that case also, all the users like uh, they need to actually have some kind of cooperation between them. So like for example, there is a shared file, let's assume. If users want to access the shared file, then there must be some kind of cooperation between the users. That is one thing. Mm, the second one may be actually computational speed up. So <clears throat> what do we mean by this is like for example there is a task and uh, we want to run this task like faster so what we can do is we can actually break this task into multiple subtasks and all these subtasks can actually be run concurrently now again this would be possible only if uh, we have a multi-core system as we have like seen in some previous videos in such a case also all the subtasks which are running they need to have some kind of cooperation between them uh, other case can actually be this modularity like for example we want to have a modular system so what we can basically do is we can divide the system calls whatever system calls we have we can actually divide them into uh, separate uh, processes or threads and maybe we can have all these uh, running concurrently again here also they will have to have some kind of cooperation among them one more uh, case can actually be convenience let's uh, like for example there are like let's say multiple users and um, I mean th let's say one user he wants to like uh, do multiple tasks at the same time maybe he's like listening to music then he would be like compiling code so all the tasks you can actually run concurrently or at the same time so there also there must be some kind of uh, like process cooperation is basically needed now these are uh, some of the examples why co uh, process cooperation is needed. Now let's say we have some cooperating processes in the system. Uh, how do we make sure uh, these two like two processes P1 and P2 cooperate with each other? So There must be some kind of mechanism which will uh, help these two processes to cooperate. So that is what is actually called the IPC mechanism. So IPC basically stands for inter-process communication. So if you want to have some kind of process communication involved uh, there are like some uh, mechanisms which are there which are called this inter-process communication uh, uh, mechanism so there are actually two basic models one is called the <coughs> shared memory shared memory model and the second one is message passing so using these two models it, uh, it is possible for two processes to have uh, inter-process communication so just to give a brief uh, on what shared memory model is and what message passing model is like shared memory model is like uh, the two processes which are communicating each other they will actually communicate through a shared memory 
so these two processes will actually share some memory region like one process will write to this shared memory and the other process can actually read from the shared memory so this kind of model is basically called the shared memory model message passing model is like uh, we have process 1 and process 2 they need to communicate with each other so they do it with some kind of communication link so we need to build this communication link with which these two processes can basically uh, communicate so this is just a brief we will actually uh, dig deeper into the shared memory model and message uh, passing model in the next videos